What is up, beautiful C4C people? I hope you guys are doing well today. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, this is verses 8 through 12. Solomon continues to talk about how meaningless things are, that everything is vanity and vexation under the sun, and that brings him to saying in verse 8, this too is meaningless. A miserable business, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up, but pity anyone who falls down and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. It has been dangerously frigid outside for almost a week now. Now, just think for a moment about being in a situation where it was so cold you had to huddle together with others to survive. The question is, would you do it? If it was dangerously cold and you were in a situation where you could die, would you huddle together with your C4C family to survive? So what about with your church family? Would you huddle together with a complete stranger? What would you do if it was so cold that you might die without the warmth of others? So the point Solomon is attempting to make here is fairly apparent by the common thread in all three of the metaphors he describes. And this is from verses 10 all the way through 12. Number one is the idea of falling into a pit. That if you fall into a pit by yourself, it's going to be very difficult for you to get out. Number two is the concept of keeping warm. So if you don't have someone to help you to stay warm and you're not around anything else that generates heat, it's going to be very difficult to stay warm. And then the third concept is the idea of being overpowered. So if you have someone else with you and you're attacked, then you can defend yourself. So we, we see the common thread here, and we also see that not only is two better than one, but the last point he makes is, is more is better, or, or three is better than one because a cord of three strands is not easily broken. So the answer to my earlier question, I'm assuming is yes. You would huddle with others if it would keep you alive. You need other Christians to be deeply involved in the experience of your life to thrive when things are difficult. Now, notice I did not say that you need to call on others when things are difficult in your life. We need to already be fostering those relationships and those, those friendships, those mentor relationships, so that when things are difficult, the foundation is already built. And the truth is, you cannot receive the same kind of encouragement, confidence, or edification from anyone in the way you do from Christian family. There's just no substitute for it. So how do we receive this kind of spiritual encouragement? Number one, you want to take every opportunity given to meet together. Now, this means first being proactive. Number one invite someone that you've never invited to go do something for the simple fact that they're a Christian. I would suggest you start by doing that with someone of the same sex if you feel like you have the tendency to turn that into more. So just start by asking someone, hey man, we have never done anything together and my crazy bald college minister issued this challenge that I needed to ask you to do something, to go out for a cup of coffee or go out to grab something to eat or talk on the phone because we've never actually done anything together and I need to do my part to try to build my Christian relationships. So number one is just to be proactive. Number two, this also means coming to everything you can that we provide. So if, if you're listening to this and you're a regular in Campus for Christ, if you're on the fringe and you've attended a couple of things, or if you've never attended and you're in the area and you're hearing my voice, I want to offer the invitation, blanket statement across the board, to come visit 
and attend everything you possibly can. And if you're not a regular member, let me tell you that the people that we have that are members of C4C, I know them personally, and yes, they're failed, and yes, they're flawed, and I believe most of them would be the first to tell you that, but they are the highest of quality. They're the best people because they're striving, struggling, trying to live their lives for God. And when you get with people who are trying to live their lives for God, they're going to provide you with that warmth that you can't provide for yourself because the warmth is not coming from them. The warmth is coming from God and there's a conductivity there. They are a conduit to God. So if you are a regular and you're hearing this, I again want to challenge you to be that light source, to be that source of warmth to the people around you, even people that you're not used to hanging out with, and plan to do things on your own. Take that challenge now. And then number two, we're going to be getting back together pretty much on a normal schedule. Hopefully, Lord willing, this cold will be done by next Sunday. So plan on attending everything that we do and allow those relationships to grow so that when you come into a spiritual winter in your life, that you have those there to offer God's warmth and to keep you warm. I hope you guys have a great day today and I hope you stay safe and warm and I hope to see you Sunday. Take it easy.